Um, is it really what I think it is? While cleaning the floor under the bed of our bedroom, I found a wiretap. It was small and would not have been noticed at first glance. It was a good thing I happened to find it while cleaning. Who did that and why? Hey! I called my husband into the living room and went back to the bedroom. When I pointed to the wiretap on the floor, my husband put his finger to his mouth to tell me to keep quiet. The next moment, my husband said louder than his normal voice, Well, I'm looking forward to our next weekend trip. Huh? You know, our trip. It's the first time we're camping together, so I'm really looking forward to it. We leave at 9 a.m., right? At this point, I finally understood the intent of my husband's comment. He was deliberately putting on a show so that the person who had set this up would hear him. I'll make sure to find out who did it. My name is Lily. I'm 30 years old. Upon graduating from college, I started working for an IT company and spent my 20s immersed in my work. I loved my job and had a busy but fulfilling life. And six months ago, I got married. I met my husband James on a blind date which my friend arranged. When we talked, we hit it off right away. After about a year of dating, he proposed to me. At that time, all I did was work, and our dates were only on weekends. Even so, James was kind enough to say me phrases like this. I love both the hard-working Lily and the natural version of Lily when we are together. But that's why I want to be with you forever. Are you fine marrying me? Even if we get married, I want to keep my job. Of course, you don't have to quit. And we'll think about having children when the time is right for both of us. We should both be saving for the baby that's going to be born someday, while we still can. James. I want to be with you regardless of things like jobs or children. So please, marry me. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thus, I readily accepted James' proposal. With this man, I was sure I would be happy. I was convinced of that. The following month, I went to my parents' house to introduce James to them, and they were happy to see us, crying. The following week, this time I went to James' parents' house to say hello. He rang the intercom, and a kindly-looking woman opened the door. Oh, James, welcome home. I'm home, Mom. And this is my fiancé, Lily. Oh my goodness, what a lovely young lady. Nice to meet you, I'm Grace, James' mother. Seeing Grace smiling at me, I rushed to greet her too. After introducing myself, we were led into the living room. On the sofa sits my father-in-law, who says hello and smiles at me. He looks much like my husband. We continued to talk about many things, and our greetings to my parents-in-law went without a hitch. The next month, my husband and I got married. Both of our parents were in favor of the marriage, so there was nothing to worry about. Both my parents were very happy. And James's parents seemed nice, too. According to my friends, it sounds like they have a lot of problems with their mothers-in-law, but I was glad that I didn't have any. Yes, I was still unaware of it at that time. I had not yet realized the true nature of James's mother, Grace. One day, a week after our marriage, it was my day off and I got up at 8 a.m. I was having a leisurely breakfast with my husband in my pajamas when their intercom rang. I'll get it. You can have your breakfast. My husband headed for the door. It's unusual to have a delivery service so early in the morning. As I was thinking that, to my surprise, it was my mother-in-law who came to visit. Huh? Mom? I could hear my husband's surprised voice all the way over here. I swallowed the bread I had just put in my mouth and ran to the front door. And Grace greeted me cheerfully. Good morning, Lily. Grace smiled at me and I run my hands through my hair which had not been brushed through yet. Uh, good morning, Grace. I'm sorry, I'm still dressed like this. It's okay, I'm rather sorry. It's Saturday and it's your day off, right? No, it's fine. Please, come in. I'm sorry, I didn't bring a gift for you. I just 
wanted to visit you. Oh, I'm sorry, we didn't prepare anything either. It's okay. My husband looked at my mother-in-law, who's smiling at him, and said, Please, at least call me when you visit us. And rushed after her into the living room. We chatted about recent news and something like that, and the time passed rapidly. I hurriedly changed my clothes, but I had no makeup on, and my hair was messy. Worst of all, this is the first time I see Grace after being married, and I'm dressed like this. Grace, I hope you're not shocked by seeing me like this. But she didn't seem to be mad at me, so I wondered if she was okay with me. As we talked, Grace and I became more and more comfortable with each other, and I naturally spent more time smiling at her. The next thing I knew, it was almost 11.30 in the afternoon. Then Grace noticed this and approached my husband. Is it that late already? I'm kind of hungry. James, can you get us something? Mom, are you going to eat lunch here? Why not? I want to get to know Lily better. I've always wanted a daughter. But we've only been married a week. It won't take long. And anyway, you are going to be together forever. That's true, but... James glances at me with a slightly awkward expression on his face. Perhaps he's concerned about me. But I can't say anything in front of Grace. And besides, I also want to get along with my mother-in-law. I smiled and told my husband. That's nice. I'd like to have lunch with Grace, too. It's your day off. Is that okay? Of course. I can have lunch with you every day, but it's not that easy with Grace. If you say so, I don't mind. Sighing slightly, my husband mumbled something about it and went out to buy lunch. When I was alone with Grace and got up to make tea, she laughed and said, Lily, I don't want tea. I came here today to talk to you. Talk with me? Oh, I just wanted to ask you. Yes, what is it? Lily, when are you planning to have a baby? What? It's a question I never thought I'd be asked, and for a moment my mind went blank. A child? How could I know when I was going to have a baby? Besides, we've only been married for a week, so why would anyone bother asking me such a question? Grace looked at my slurred reaction and sighed deeply. You know, Lily, James is our oldest son. We need him to give us a grandchild as soon as possible. But we just got married. That doesn't matter. You do know your ovulation cycle, right? What cycle? You have to time it right. Well, of course, we want a boy, but after the second baby, we can have a girl. Grace doesn't seem to know what she is saying. She's just smiling happily. She didn't mind offending me, and she's just saying how she feels. But for me, it was nothing but pressure. In the end, Grace told me about our plans to have a baby for 30 minutes before my husband came home. But as soon as my husband came home, Grace's attitude changed drastically. She continued to make small talk, not even bothering to mention the child. Then, my mother-in-law began to visit our house once a week without telling us that she is going to come over. Each time, she would stay for hours, make my husband go out to buy food and tea and etc. And during that time, she would talk to me about having a baby. I wondered if I should talk to my husband about it, but knowing how much he cared about his family, I couldn't bring myself to talk to him. Six months into our marriage, that hasn't changed. On that day, again, at the urging of my mother-in-law, my husband went to a nearby restaurant to pick up a takeout. It was painful for me to talk to my mother-in-law alone, so I pretended I wasn't feeling well and ran to the bathroom. James, I can't wait for you to get home. I spent some time in the bathroom looking at my phone. Then suddenly I heard something that sounded like the living room door opening. I tried to find out what is going on by listening. Again, the door to some room opened, and at the same time, I heard Grace's footsteps. I had a bad feeling and rushed out of the bathroom. Then the bedroom door was open and I saw Grace peeking into the room. Grace? Grace seemed to be surprised, hearing my voice. 
but then quickly returned to her normal expression. Then, she began to say something sarcastic, like this. Oh, Lily, you can't even create a nice mood in such a bed like this, can you? Huh? What the hell? Even James can't get into the mood in a bedroom like this. And are you even wearing any lingerie? Wait, wait, give me a moment. I can't talk with you about that. Lily, I'm giving you advice for your own good. But why are you talking to me like that? It was at this moment that I finally saw Grace for what she really was. She didn't think of me as a daughter or as a wife of her son. She just takes me as a tool to help her give birth to her grandchildren. Once I realized this, I felt an inexpressible sense of loss. After that, Grace rambled on and on about something, but I couldn't hear a word of it. The next night, I decided to talk to my husband about Grace. I chose the next night because I wanted to spend at least Sunday afternoon with James in peace. After lunch, my husband said he would do the dishes, and I decided to clean the house with a vacuum. As I came to clean the bedroom, I remembered what had happened with Grace yesterday. Even though we are a family, it's still not normal to come into our bedroom. I need to talk to James that night and ask him to warn his mother. I made up my mind and continued cleaning. I stuck a handheld mop in the crevice under the bed to give it a thorough cleaning that day. And along with a little dust, I found a small black object. It was something plastic, seemingly like a toy block. What is that? I was about to say that much when I had a flashback. I had seen this before on TV. I had seen on TV before the existence of a wiretap that had been planted in a room. Oh, wait, is it really what I think it is? You wouldn't notice it just by taking a quick look at the small size of the device. It's a good thing I happened to find it while cleaning. Who did it and why? I put the bug on the floor and went to my husband in the living room. I lowered my voice and spoke to him timidly. Hey. What's the matter? You look so scared. There's some kind of small listening device in my room. There's no such thing as a bug. I swear, the other day when Grace came over, she was in our bedroom without permission, so maybe that's when it happened. But why would my mom do that? I told him right then and there what I had planned to tell him at night. My husband had a complicated look on his face the whole time, but he kept quiet and listened to me until the end. When I finished telling him everything, my husband said he wanted to talk to me, pulled me out of the room, and headed for the bedroom. When he pointed to the listening device on the floor, he put his finger to his mouth to tell me to keep quiet. The next moment, my husband said in a voice which was louder than usual, well, I'm looking forward to our weekend trip. What? You see, it's a trip. It's the first time we're going on camping together, so I'm really looking forward to it. We leave at 9am, right? At this point, I finally understood the intent of my husband's comment. He was deliberately putting on a show so that the person who has set this up would hear him. At that moment, my anger toward Grace, which I had been keeping under wraps, suddenly overflowed. If it came to this, I will be a good actor. I raised my voice to my husband with enthusiasm. Yes, yes, 9am, so don't ever oversleep. I know. Three days and two nights is not an easy thing to do. It's a great opportunity. Yeah, the spare key is under the potted plant as usual, right? Yeah, of course. In case we lose our key during the trip, we won't be able to get into the house. Of course, we don't usually keep the spare key under a potted plant. In this day and age, it would be hard to find someone who would be so careless. This is just to lure Grace out of the house. Even if it wasn't my mother-in-law, the culprit would surely turn up. We then made it look like the vacuum cleaners accidentally hit and destroyed the bug. Now all we had to do was wait for the culprit to show up this weekend. It's been a while since then, but Grace hasn't shown her face yet. Perhaps she's getting impatient, thinking the, the bug has malfunctioned. 
My husband and I decided to slip the spare key under the potted plant next to the front door and wait in the room next to the bedroom. At 10 a.m. on the weekend morning, the moment arrived. The front door opened and footsteps approached us. I looked at my husband and held my breath. Sure enough, the footsteps headed for the bedroom. Just as the culprit would have entered, my husband and I jumped out of the way at the same time. I looked into the bedroom and there was Grace. I knew it was you, Grace. I muttered to myself, and Grace's eyes widened. And she was flabbergasted. Why, why, why are you here? I'm sorry, the story about going on a trip was a lie. What do you mean? We lied on purpose because a wiretap was found here. We lied on purpose to lure the would-be culprit, you, Grace, out here. Why me? I mean, who else would come up to our house and go into our bedroom? Grace, you seem to have been very sensitive about me having a baby. Grace's face turned bright red and she broke out in a sweat. I thought she was going to give up, but then she looked at James and started pleading, desperately. No, listen, James. I was just giving Lily some advice. I told her to give her best so that you would be in the mood for that. If you were advising her, why did you have to bug us? It's just to make sure you're doing it right, because Lily hasn't gotten pregnant in the last six months. Bullshit. What do you think we are? Lily is not a tool to have a baby. Don't force your desires on us. I don't need a mother like you. James's words made Grace's face pale, which had been bright red a few moments before. And then she looked at me, saying, Please, do something about it. She began to beg me. I looked down at her and said, Do something. Whose fault is it that you let this happen? You started this by yourself. You got yourself into this mess because you came between us more than necessary and made a fool of me. Well, I was just doing everything just for you. It's none of your business. I don't need you to worry about us. James and I are in love. We want to have a baby, but I don't need you to force that on me. Don't you dare interfere with us anymore. I guess she didn't expect me, her daughter-in-law, to go so far. My mother-in-law just nodded off and left. Of course, my husband called my father-in-law and told him everything. Later, my mother-in-law was scolded severely by my father-in-law. After that, my father-in-law forbade my mother-in-law from coming in and out of our house at all. And we stopped visiting my parents-in-law's house until we felt at peace with the situation. My mother-in-law no longer received a monthly allowance from my father-in-law, and she had no money to spend on her own. On weekdays, she used to go shopping and have tea with the neighbors, but all these pastimes have disappeared. But all these things are her fault, and I hope she will reflect on that. I, on the other hand, just found out I'm pregnant. I guess Grace's regular visits and sarcasm had been putting a lot of pressure on me to have a baby. Now that the stress is off of me, I've been able to successfully get pregnant. Is it a boy? Is it a girl? I wondered as I looked at the baby items in the shops. My husband put his hand on my growing belly and said happily, It doesn't matter whether it's a boy or a girl. It's our baby. Yeah, you are right. As long as it's healthy, I'm happy either way. I can't wait to see our baby. We'll keep working together, okay? I'm so glad I married this man. It was the moment when my husband's smile looked like a big sun.